Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Shivam Basin, and uh, I will be presenting this talk, which is uh, C in the middle, that is SITM. And uh, what we'll be presenting is a middle round differential cryptanalysis attack, which is assisted by side channel, and uh, it is applicable to a range of SPM block speakers. So this is a joint work with Yakub Brie, Shalu Hu, Dirmanto Jap, Roma Pusie, and Xiang Wing Sin. Uh, to, before the talk, just to introduce myself, I'm Dr. Shivam Basin. I'm a senior research scientist at Timasek Lab, NTU Singapore. Uh, before uh, NTU, I was uh, working in telecom Paritech in France and was also doing my PhD over there. And my research interests uh, are uh, focused on physical attacks, that is side channel attacks, fault attacks, their combinations, uh, then countermeasure certifications. Uh, as well as uh, more lately hardware security of AI. So in this talk, I'll be first giving some basic context and then directly the description of the SITM attack and how do we actually perform it. Then we'll be extending this attack to deep round shuffling and finally concluding. So let's start with some context. So uh, side channel attacks are now known for almost 25 years. And there are several uh, different taxonomy and different ways to classify them. The most simple one is actually simple and differential side channel attacks. So in simple side channel attacks, the idea is to use visual inspection to look for secret information in power EM measurement. Uh, for example, looking for square and multiply in exponentiation. And differential attacks uh, are uh, typically uh, as a CPA on AES. Uh, is done with a known input output to recover a secret key using statistical method. This is uh, either uh, uh, based on uh, some leakage model generic like having weight or it could be profiled. There are several variants of this attack, but in the most general sense, uh, this is a uh, uh, this is one of the most widely used attack uh, in side channel attacks and uh, most if not all uh, types of uh, differential side channel attacks are limited to corner rounds uh, because uh, they uh, manipulate information related to known plain text or ciphertext. And uh, uh, this is the, the main uh, application setting. So uh, a couple of years ago, uh, another variant of uh, such attack was uh, proposed, uh, which, is, which was known as CARPA or side channel assisted differential plain text attack. So, uh, how does CARPA operate? So uh, this is attack is uh, limited to only bit permutation based ciphers like present and gift. And uh, the idea here is that you, that you take a sequential or a microcontroller based implementation of present and you measure a power consumption for a given plain text. And then you change one level of the plain text only, keep everything else the same. And uh, then you measure the power consumption again. And just by looking at the power, power consumption difference, you could actually track the propagation of the difference uh, into, the, into the deeper rounds, like round one and round two. And that uh, reveals information on the key. So different uh, differences can actually lead to different kind of uh, uh, propagation and therefore can reveal different information about the key. So in this paper, we generalize SCARPA-like attacks in form of SITM to uh, generic middle or deep round attack on a wider class of SBN block ciphers. Uh, we validated uh, these attacks on 8-bit AVR and 32-bit ARM microcontrollers. Uh, we also claim to first ones to demonstrate this attack on middle round protected with shuffling countermeasures and also attacking uh, complex ciphers like AES-128 up to as deep as four rounds. Uh, there are other contributions of this work which are not uh, like the main part of this presentation. Like uh, there are results on skinny and present. Uh, uh, this attack can also be extended to other ciphers like gift, rectangle, and midori. And uh, we also propose a methodology to compute the number of rounds to mass to protect SITM. And, uh, but all these details are not in this presentation. So uh, interested people can definitely uh, uh, take a look into the paper. Now, the last slide of the context is uh, attacker model. So our attacker setting is as follows. We assume a sequential software implementation uh, that is running on a microcontroller, for example. 
uh, it's a chosen plain text attack because we are inserting uh, known differences. So uh, therefore, that justifies the chosen plain text attack. Uh, we observe side channel leakage in the middle round, not in the first or the last round, but uh, somewhere in between. Uh, as uh, I explained, that will be clear. And uh, what exactly we are looking for uh, in the side channel trace is we want to identify if from uh, one encryption to another, if a particular intermediate value has changed or not. So uh, of course, uh, this attack can be applied on different uh, targets, but the target that we have in mind for the, for the rest of the presentation is uh, heterogeneous countermeasures, which means that uh, since corner rounds are more vulnerable to side channel attack, or let's say most of the attacks, uh, side channel attacks target only the corner rounds. So uh, the implementations where corner rounds are well protected, for example, with masking, but middle rounds have either unprotected or have lightweight countermeasures like shop. So coming to the attack, that is the C in the middle or SITM attack, uh, we can start with uh, just understanding uh, uh, with the example of an AES-128. So AES uh, having a very nice diffusion functions like shift row and mix column uh, assures that a single byte difference inserted in the, at the plain text propagates through the whole state very fast. So in a couple of rounds, uh, actually, uh, a single byte plain text will will be uh, uh, will make a difference or propagate all over the state. And if you go the deeper you go, the probability of that propagation becomes closer and closer to one. But there are some exceptions. That is, if you if an attacker is able to choose particular set of differences, or there exist uh, certain differences that actually uh, leads opposite. So before getting diffused, it starts with a convergence and then a diffusion will occur. So this exactly is, uh, is one example that we are interested in. So we insert a one uh, diagonal difference into the plain text such that uh, they, uh, uh, they actually lead to a convergence of the difference to a single byte, which then uh, in the following rounds will follow the similar pattern of uh, spreading to a column and then to the full state. But uh, for the initial round, we will see uh, a convergence and which will be different from, uh, which will be a very rare event and, and it will be different for, uh, uh, different from all other executions. And uh, the convergence uh, is what we intend to detect by sidechain. So uh, we do a experimental validation. So the experimental validation we did on an 8-bit Atmega AVR uh, where uh, you could see a single uh, convergence or, or a single difference can be detected in round two, or that propagates to four differences in round three. Similar uh, actually can be uh, seen for a 32-bit uh, ARM Cortex M3, uh, where a single difference in round two uh, can be formed by choosing plain text uh, difference appropriately, and then that propagates to round three to, to cause one column difference. Now, uh, SITM exploits such cases, and the methodology is as follows. So the first thing SITM does, it insert plain text differences uh, and observe uh, differential pattern in, in the middle rounds. Now, since uh, we don't know the key, it is not possible to predict what plain text difference will actually cause a convergence, and therefore we have to test many combinations until we found a uh, like convergence in the differential pattern in the middle round. And once a convergence is found, that actually leads us to, uh, to recover partial key uh, using plain text pair. So for example, in AES, a convergence in this case will, will lead us to recover one uh, column or 32, 32 bits of the key. And we repeat this for other columns independently. And finally, if uh, for certain cipher, for example, AES 192 or uh, or uh, 256, if we need multiple round keys to, to have the master key, then we would repeat the attack on different rounds. So, uh, so the key recovery, for example, for a AES128 uh, uh, comes as follows. So in the first step, uh, which is we insert differences. So we take an example where we are inserting differences as 0, 5, 10, and 15 byte of the state. And uh, the probability of finding a convergence uh, for 
uh, for this particular case or uh, such particular cases is 2 to the power minus 22. I will not go into the details of the number because uh, due to scarcity of time, but the details uh, can be found into the paper. And so we have a probability of 2 to the power minus 22 to have a convergence to occur. And uh, we need approximately 2 to the power 11.5 plain text to observe this uh, uh, convergence. So basically, we generate plain text with such uh, with uh, uh, with differences only in these bytes, and the other bytes remain fixed. And we just uh, uh, keep on uh, querying the AES, and we observe the middle round, and uh, we see if a particular uh, differential pattern that is of interest uh, exists. And wh what is this differential pattern? It is basically one active byte in round two, or four active byte or one active column in round three. So uh, you can observe at, uh, at either places. So for example, if uh, if first two rounds are protected, then you can observe this in the third round. So uh, once uh, you are able to actually detect this, uh, uh, this particular uh, active byte, uh, the, the key recovery uh, goes as follows. So the, you assume uh, you hypothesize the value of the uh, of the active byte and you propagate backwards towards the plain text. The plain text difference is known and uh, that will actually help you to derive equations between the, plain, uh, uh, between the observed difference and the master key. And uh, that will actually uh, be not satisfied by a single key, but a set of keys. And then you will have to uh, repeat uh, this experiment to actually filter the, the key candidates using new, new plain text flow. So, and then this has to be repeated for all the columns. So uh, first you need 2 to the power 11.5 to generate a convergence. Then uh, you have to repeat this. Uh, that cause an additional 2 to the power 9 plain text, uh, which, uh, which will actually, uh, when uh, added together, will give you the number of plain text required to, to derive one column of the key. And then you have to repeat it separately for all the four columns. And that all together comes on average to 2 to power 13.73 to the plain text. The attack can very well be extended to round four. So instead of observing a single, like one column to a single byte difference, we could imagine a case that is shown in this figure where you are looking at two columns active and that actually leads to two bytes that are, that are active at the end of the first round and that uh, uh, leads to a very special uh, pattern in the fourth round. Now, since uh, the observation is at the fourth round and coming back uh, com uh, makes the e equations more complex, the number of required plain text for this attack will naturally increase. And in this case, the number of plain text required are 2 to the power 27.5. The details of how these are derived are, can be found into the paper. So to summarize uh, the results, uh, we look at different ciphers, in particular AES, skinny, and present. And uh, uh, these results, of course, are uh, applicable to other SPN ciphers as well, which share a uh, common structure. And uh, uh, the main uh, result here is that uh, with approximately uh, 2 to power 12 to 2 to power 28 ciphertext, uh, all these implementations were vulnerable to, to a SITM attack. And uh, the attack can go as deep as fifth round in AES and up to 12th round in skin. So uh, this, I think, is the, is the key uh, feature of this attack that it can go really deep if you're able to find differential patterns uh, that, that can be expected. Uh, also, uh, without going into detail how they are derived, uh, the details are in the paper. Uh, like uh, we do provide a methodology to calculate the minimum number of rounds that should be masked. Uh, and if we, if we see across uh, the studied cipher, the number of rounds uh, vary from, uh, like the minimum number of rounds of the study examples was 70%. And this is only for the particular attack. If there's a future optimization of the attack, this number of rounds uh, uh, to mask might increase. And therefore, like the bottom line or the, or the main conclusion from this we can derive is that it is important to protect all the rounds and not only middle rounds, which uh, also has been indicated by several works in the past. Now, uh, we extend this attack to
to deep round shuffling. So again, uh, um, like I, I will start with a very uh, quick introduction to shuffling. So uh, normally, uh, a normal uh, algorithm like AES will uh, will actually execute in a very regular sequence pattern. So for example, from one execution to another, one operation will, will be followed by another operation and that sequence will remain the same, which are represented as different colors uh, in, this, uh, in this example. And uh, in a shuffle case, uh, what, an uh, what a uh, defender can do is basically just randomize the order of uh, these operations so that they don't execute at the same time sample and therefore uh, increases the difficulty of, uh, of uh, uh, performing attacks like correlation uh, by, uh, by distributing the leakage over a period of time rather than being concentrated, uh, concentrated at a single time. So uh, in uh, this actually uh, increases the, the number of uh, like distributes over uh, n factorial uh, possibilities for the sequence and uh, that actually leads uh, to, uh, to the difficulty of the attack. Again, uh, shuffling is a countermeasure. It's, uh, it's basically something which is uh, causing, uh, which is causing noise. So already it becomes uh, difficult to attack in the first round, but the deeper you go, the equations uh, become more and more complex. And therefore with this, with the added noise from shuffling, this becomes uh, even harder. And therefore uh, there are not a lot of work which have concentrated on attacking deep round uh, countermeasures. So uh, uh, what we demonstrated in the following is, uh, is a following attack setting. Uh, we again take a case of heterogeneous countermeasure where the con corner rounds are well protected, that is masking plus shuffling. Uh, but in the middle rounds, the masking is disabled and only shuffling is enabled so that uh, uh, the designer can still win some performance uh, over uh, full mask implementation. So we have 16 as boxes, therefore 16 factorial execution sequences are possible. But uh, since it's shuffled, so averaging is not possible and uh, this leads to a low SNR. So the attack procedure uh, is as follows. Basically, we are interested in a plain text difference. So we insert a plain text difference. Uh, and uh, uh, so there are two traces uh, for, for each of the plain text and uh, basically which is represented by TR0 and TR1. And uh, both these traces have 16 S boxes and all these 16 S boxes, uh, let's say we are able to find one POI for, for sim simplicity for each S box. So we have 16 uh, PO POI for 16 S boxes in these two traces. Now what we, uh, what an attacker will do is uh, basically the, it will compute a pairwise difference for each POI so in an unprotected implementation, uh, this would be easy because uh, the, the executions are not randomized and therefore uh, the same as box will be subtracted to each other. And if there's a particular byte active or not active can be directly detected. But in case of shuffling, uh, since the order of between uh, TR0 and TR1 will be different, uh, this is not easy to detect. But still, uh, if we are repeating enough number of time, there is a chance that for some sequences, two, uh, two S boxes are actually ha having the same, uh, same position uh, in the execution for two consecutive sequences. So for example, if you're looking at S box number zero, so for, uh, if we test enough number of samples, there will be some cases where S box zero is executed at the zeroth position in TR zero and TR one. And we are, only, uh, we are basically interested in that. And what we do is like after taking the pairwise differences, that is TR0 minus TR1 uh, uh, and TR0 minus TR1 for the first position and all the 15th position, we compute a sum of the differences, which is known as D over here. And uh, if there is no convergence detected, this value will be pretty, uh, will have a very, uh, will be close to some random value uh, that uh, like the bounds on which can be easily determined. But if, a convergence has occurred, the value of D will go down that, uh, that uh, will, will actually deviate from that, that distribution. And uh, this uh, is exactly what we use to detect the convergence. And once the convergence is detected, the key recovery follows exactly the same process. So uh, here is a simulated and uh, 
real experiments or uh, from, from real traces, uh, which we compute at different SNR values. And you could see that when a convergence is occurring and it is not occurring, the distribution is slightly different and uh, can be distinguished from each other. However, this, uh, these two figures are only for, uh, uh, for demonstration because uh, uh, unless you are profiling, you won't be able to obtain this, these uh, distributions uh, easily. And therefore, the idea, uh, but uh, the, the idea that we can simply follow is that uh, instead of trying to draw the distribution, we just enumerate uh, uh, like from the minimum value of D until we find a uh, few uh, convergences. So in, a, uh, in the experiment that we did, uh, we actually found up to, up to four con uh, convergence in the top 20 values of, uh, uh, of D and that actually allowed us to recover it. So finally, coming to the conclusion, uh, if we compare this attack, there are several uh, candidates which can be compared, uh, which it can be compared to. So differential side channel attack uh, and SITM are, are different because one targets corner rounds and the other targets middle rounds. But uh, there are other uh, known attacks like collision based uh, uh, algebraic side channel attacks or soft analy uh, analytical side channel attacks which can target middle round, but uh, how we differ or how SITM differ from, from these attacks is that uh, first of all, it has a low SNR sensitivity as we showed like uh, uh, even in, uh, in low noise as well as uh, uh, like noise generating countermeasure, it was able to, to actually uh, recover the key and there is no profiling needed. We do need to know the point of interest, uh, but there are several non-profile techniques to detect that. But as for example, Saska, uh, we don't need to, uh, to actually uh, know the uh, uh, perform a detailed profile. So to conclude, uh, we presented SITM, which is a side channel assisted middle round differential cryptanalysis attack. It is a generalized deep round attack on SPN Cypress, uh, where the results were presented on a, on a bunch of Cypress, including AES, Kinney, Pleasant, and is they extendable to others? Uh, we show that we can target AES up to five rounds, Kinney up to 12 rounds. This was the first attack on a middle round shuffling. And uh, again, the results reinstates that uh, there is a need for protecting all rounds and only protecting corner rounds is not enough. Thank you.